Hi, uh, thank you very much, uh, Autodesk, AIAB, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Winston, Winston Wong from Architectural Services Department. Um, I'm very happy to have the chance to um, um, share our experience in BIM with all of you. Um, so, in contrast to just the presentation from Mr. Chen, uh, which is like a city scale metro system, the project that I'm going to share is relatively quite small scale. So, um, you can see the, uh, the sample project is just a repositioning of like Sheng Yip Street Rest Garden as Choi Ping River Garden. The project cost is only like a 100, 107 mil. Site area is relatively small, 5,800 square meter. And the construction period is also very short, like um, slightly less than two years. But um, the reason that we are using this project as, as a sample to um, apply our BIM knowledge is that this is a, a small project in our department and it's an in-house one. So uh, we didn't engage any uh, BIM consultant or any consultant at all. So all the things that are um, done in this project is by our in-house staff. And it's also because that we were trying to, because since the adoption of, of BIM, uh, we have received some feedback from consultants, contractors, or even some of the staff that like BIM is like um, a new task in our project cycle. So it's kind of a new work, an extra, extra duties or extra work. So what we are trying to do is we were trying to figure a way that we can use this new technology to help us to do our daily work. So instead of doing something more, we're trying to um, use something new to help us to relieve our everyday duties. So that's why we choose a relatively small project as our trial. Um, the project background is, um, um, is just um, the main thing is the uh, surface building with a canopy cover and also with the auxiliary uh, facilities like some fitness centers, hot landscape, soft landscape, and that is it. Um, this is to show you the, uh, the main building, which is the uh, canopy cover, which is a structural steel with covering with um, tension fabric structure, covering a one-story uh, RC building. Um, the background is that, it, that there is an existing um, Shengyip Street rest garden, but at this in the potential land sale area, so we're trying to relocate that rest garden to the site just across the street to free up some area for to enlarge the potential land sale site. And we also, in doing that, is to improve the overall environment and um, provide a new rest garden to the um, community. So um, the content in my um, presentation will basically be in uh, like five parts. The first is about project management in BIM perspective and how to communicate with our other discipline in the multi phases of our building cycle and also to collaborate with other stakeholders. We try to um, use some innovative application in our project and also use some like online or cloud solutions to uh, share information with our project team. So um, in our daily project management thing that um, this project is actually like done before um, the new circular and, and also we found that um, 3D models are very useful in our project but at the same time and in, in particular like this uh, transition period, 2D drawings are still very widely used in the construction industry and we also need them for statutory submission, tendering for frontline workers. So we found that uh, 2D drawings are still very um, um, useful and essential in our building projects. But we found that generating 2D drawings from a 3D model <coughs> can be quite challenging and also it it doesn't comply with the CSWP circular at that time, although we, we noticed that um, the Bureau has issued a circular saying that the 2D drawings generated now doesn't need to follow the, uh, um, the CSWP, but at that time, we, we, we still need to do that. And also, at this transition period, we found that um, a drawing that is complying with CSWP will be more uh, useful and practical for the uh, downstream um, industries. 
So the, our challenges was, uh, were that um, Rivet is using a, a different concept. It's using family categories, but CAT is using layers and line types. So they are totally different concepts, and we found it was quite um, um, time consuming or, or difficult to match the two things together. And we use a lot of effort to manually prepare these drawings from model. And we use quite a lot of time to make them compliant with CSWP. And there was no um, default setting for exporting the 2D drawings from the model into the drawing that can comply with our CAD standard. So um, basically, we, we have to do things like manually when one drawing at a time. And we found that it was, uh, we, we spent quite a lot of time in preparing drawings more than that we need to prepare the model. So um, the uh, structural engineering branch of our department, our, our in-house technical colleagues, they try to um, do something to help this situation. And they develop some customized export setup in Rivet that can transform the Rivet categories to match with um, CSWP layers. So it's basically a template or the setup that we use in our department. And we use it as a standard setup that every project uh, from now on that we'll be using that can help the uh, um, drawing preparation can match easier to the uh, CAS standard. And after customizing the setup, the model can export to a CAD drawing. And we also um, develop an automated uh, AutoNIFS program in AutoCAD. So it's uh, just a small program that we developed. Then when we run the program in the um, generated CAD drawing from uh, AutoCAD, uh, from, from Rivet, it can convert the drawing content into a setting that comply with CSWP. So it's basically a, a two-step thing that we do, and we're trying to um, reduce our effort to make a drawing compliant with the ECAS standard. And the AutoNIFS program is capable to convert um, the, base, the, the most um, basic uh, component, like the uh, uh, layers, lines, colors, font types, font, et cetera, for these things that are the uh, basic requirements in the ECAS standard. So with this um, export setup in Rivet and the AutoLift program in the CAD, that our generation of drawings can be like um, automated to a quite great extent. And the drawings prepared can comply with our CAD standard. And using this automation process or program, we can reduce a lot of our manual operations and eliminate a lot of the human error. So, the drawings prepared by all teams in, in our um, branch can have the same results that eliminate the uh, discrepancies from team to team. So we consider that this AutoNIFS program and the setup is uh, acting as a bridge to bridge through between the 3D model and the 2D drawings. The second part is the uh, involvement um, across uh, different phases in our building cycle. So um, the subject project is um, structural steel, steel canopy. It's, it's not a big one. It's about 20 meters in span. But it's um, not in an uh, orthogonal shape. It's like a fan-shaped structure. So we, we found that uh, when we are using 2D drawings, like a traditional way to represent such um, a structure, it will be quite difficult to put all the information onto the 2D drawings. And as a result, the information will be lost from one phase to another, from the designer to the contractors and then to the subcontractors. In each stage, some information will be lost. And that's because 2D drawings can only present a certain limited information, and it's impossible to contain all the information in the designers. So this is a very um, um, simple illustration or a comparison that um, in the traditional 2D world, we usually use uh, a framing plan to represent a steel structure, and it's just just uh, a single line with a uh, schedule. So it's also always subject to some uh, interpretation and course referencing to uh, imagine the uh, structure on a drawing. But with um, BIM or with a 3D model, it's much more easier 
for everyone and for all parties to uh, visualize how the structure is like, in particular when uh, shapes are not in a 90 degree angle coming, so it's much more easier to read. And also in, in um, a steel structure, the engineer always needs to do a lot of um, set points and approximation to find out the exact alignment, dimensions, angles of members because it cannot be done in a very um, exact manner and certain approximation have to be done in a 2D plane view. But with a 3D view that the, uh, and with the help of the uh, software, then the exact dimensions, exact angle can be retrieved very quickly and easily and that helps the job of the designer a lot. And in steel structure, the even more uh, a complicated thing is to uh, represent the uh, steel joint in the structure. It's, it's, it's usually more complicated than the members. And in this example, and it's because the uh, steel members are jointing together at quite various different angles. And we try to use our uh, traditional like 2D drawings to present the joint, and it will be um, very, very time consuming to present with a lot of processions, lots of views, uh, elevations to present uh, a joint on drawing. And that will also be in, uh, inducing some information loss because it's just impossible to, to represent everything on a drawing. But with our 3D media, then it's so much more easier to present this to our uh, colleagues or to our clients. And with the help of like 3D printing, is also be helping the uh, designer to visualize his own work. Another thing that we uh, use is to um, generate the member schedule, which is a very uh, typical or easy function from um, the IM from Rifrit. And we use this uh, to be a help for the designer in his um, uh, optimization design. And optimization in a way not only that we are trying to make uh, the members more slim, but on the other hand, we also have information that some uh, the, the designer may find that they have some members in uh, very small quantities. But in that case, it will create some other difficulties in the uh, later stage of a project, like in um, procurement, like in material testing, and in um, hand, material handling that creates uh, some difficulties when you have too many different sizes of members. So this also helps him to optimize in a way is to simplify the structure for easier handling at later stage. And our quantity surveyor and our contractors can also use this to help their cost estimation much faster and easier and uh, in a very accurate way. Um, the next stage is that the next um, stage is about uh, communicating with other stakeholders. And it's because this project, we don't only communicate with uh, um, colleagues or stakeholders within our department. We also need to uh, convey information to outside parties, um, such as um, our clients, which is unlike with no engineering background, with the uh, district council, and with the local uh, communities. So. Using just an engineering drawing will be uh, very difficult to do. And so uh, a 3D environment or 3D presentation can help a lot. And within our own project team, we also use this to communicate with our contractor and even the uh, specialist subcontractor for the fabric structure. We uh, noticed that um, the downstream like subcontractor, their adoption of BIM is, is not as, as common as uh, a designer or main contractors. But we found that that's also a reason that um, in many cases, some um, abortive works or some conflict may occur only at the later stage when the uh, subcontractors are on board. So we, in, in this example, we try to do the 3D model at an earlier stage to involve them earlier so that we can try to eliminate those um, um, discrepancies. So in this case, we do not only like a model the main steel structure from the designer, 
We also uh, model the uh, substructure, the uh, subframe, from the uh, with the help or with collaboration with our subcontractors, with the fabric contractor, and also with um, we also model the uh, fabric structure, and we try to put them together to make sure that they all fit together in in the um, BIM, in order to make sure that um, everything can go right in in the first go. And we also use the visualizations tool like um, Naviswork, so um, all our project team can see um, the finished product, and our architect and our building services engineer can also use this tool to modify or, or, or enhance the design. So also with the view that we try to eliminate changes at uh, construction stage. Um, for um, innovative uh, application, we in, in, in uh, not only to uh, try to do our design uh, complying with the design regulations, and we also try to improve our constructability and installation sequence. So we also engage or work together with our subcontractor and even our site supervisory staff and to try to simulate or try to um, study the installation sequence of this steel structure in beforehand before they really um, carry this out on site and try to reduce the uh, wasted effort and we try to eliminate these um, abortive works on site. So we uh, use the uh, like 3D printing, we print out uh, a joint at this one and we use this to explain the uh, installation to our work, to the workers, to our site staff and we also figure that there are some sp uh, specific sequence for installation that the designer require and we use this as a very, we, we found that this is a very useful tool to explain this to the, uh, like to the steel workers how to align the members, how to like um, deliver the members on site so that not to mix up the order and try to mix everything a lot smoother on site. And we also simulate the installation um, with a 3D printout, like the, uh, we print out the uh, main steel structure and then with the secondary structure with the drainage gauli with and then with the uh, tension fabric and even with the parametric shape boot so we it's, it's kind of like um, a, a real life simulation of installation beforehand and we we did that all to make sure that um, it really fits together and the sequencing of work and the time for like delivery so we can uh, try this well beforehand it is done on site and we also used a VR tool to let our project team to see uh, with, with the goggles how the um, final product will be like so that um, we actually did some changes in this stage uh, after we see the uh, uh, visual of the finished product. So what we need to uh, make changes or we need to add, we can do that well beforehand because there's um, a, lo a relatively long lead time in uh, fabrication of uh, steel members is is not as easy as doing a uh, reinforced concrete buildings that we can that you can do um, changes more easier. And at last, we uh, use some off uh, online or cloud solutions that we try to <coughs> allow all members to access to the latest information. And it, it is also because this is uh, a small project. It's only a park reprovisioning. And the contractor is a small scale uh, business with very limited resources. And the uh, construction is in the tight program. So we don't have the time, the money, and the people that we used to have in a very big scale project. And in, in fact, in turn, that, that makes this uh, project uh, more difficult is because there's no room for mistake. And so we want, uh, we want to try to do things right in the first time. So we use our um, FTP server, the uh, large file transfer, and we keep this uh, environment always updated. And we keep the latest version of our documents, our models, and our drawings. And we give access to 
our project team, our uh, architect, ES engineers, our site supervisory staff, so that um, they can access the latest information um, in, in real time and to eliminate any misunderstandings. And we also use the handheld devices, like an iPad, on site to our site staff. So uh, it's, it's uploaded with the uh, drawings and also with the 3D model. Because we, we found that it is easier even for our site supervisory staff to uh, look at a 3D model in comparison or in order to check the construction um, sequence and to monitor the progress, which make them um, easier to compare it all and to find anything that is uh, uh, going wrong. They can find this like er easier and faster, so in any mistake that is discovered, they can be rectified in, um, in that earlier stage. So in conclusion, um, we're just trying to use this small scale, small scale project as um, a platform or as a stage to let us try use something new to us and we try to use this technology to help our daily work as I've said. So we're trying to um, use new technology to help our work to relieve our, our daily task. So we found this to be a very effective communication tool with our uh, team members and with our stakeholders and we can produce CSWP compliant drawings for the uh, submission and for tendering purposes and for the uh, main contractor and subcontractors. And we found the uh, 3D model with uh, handheld design, the handheld devices are very useful for our site staff in monitoring site progress. And we also pass the model and the information to our facilities upkeep uh, division so they, they can still use the model to do our future uh, repair and uh, uh, occupying work. So um, this is uh, my presentation for today and thank you very much.